this is just going to record sure. in case this comes off wrong. And um, we're going to have fun with this. Okay. Have a good time. We are live. <laughs> All right. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Yuri from Work Our Heart of Fitness. And um, I'm here with the one and only uh, Vin Baker. Um, I am honored and blessed to be here with him today. Um, on Saturday, I had a great opportunity to spend time with him and his family, his friends, and probably four to 500 people mm -hmm. that came to a very special event. It was Addiction Stops Here. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Addiction. Um, yes. Yep. Um, he has an amazing story. He's going to touch base on it and um, give us a little background and share what this foundation is all about and uh, what they do and how they help others, not only in the community, but around, you know, back home in Milwaukee and all the different places that he has been. So, uh, Vin, Thank it's you. a pleasure Thank Peter, you, meeting sir. you again, sir. Um, I'll leave it to you. So Yuri, thank you for coming down and, and taking the time out, obviously having the opportunity and a platform to talk about um, my life and more importantly, talk about recovery and uh, the redemptive power of God is really special to me. And I appreciate you taking the time out to come here today to my my home church, Full Gospel Tabernacle in Old Sabre, Connecticut, where my father's the pastor. So um, my story, well documented, and for those who don't know, just had an amazing um, opportunity and was very blessed early in my life to go to the University of Hartford uh, to play basketball there for four years and then get drafted in 1993 by the Milwaukee Bucks um, with, as, an, as the eighth pick, a lottery pick. Um, my first five years in the NBA, I was a four-time NBA All-Star out of my first five years, four-time NBA All-Star named to the Olympic team in 2000. Um, made the all NBA team a couple of times, but then most importantly, my life was, my career was derailed um, by alcoholism and my addiction to alcohol. And ultimately I lost my career. Uh, I lost the fortune that God had blessed me with and um, lost a lot, you know, not even just career and fortune. More importantly, I'd lost my way. And, um, the amazing part about God is I grew up in this church my, and I grew up a PK. The amazing part about God is I, I realized that everything that I went through professionally um, and every all the trials and tribulations and the addiction that I went through uh, for about 10 years led me back to where I was supposed to be. And that's um, back to God and back being a Christian. And not only did it lead me back to where I was supposed to be, he gave me this crazy platform to help save lives. And so that's what I'm doing with my my foundation, Bouncing Back. We deal with uh, recovery, uh, deal with those people who need to be in recovery, who have been in recovery. We're just, uh, Bouncing Back is solely, um, its sole function is to find people who are struggling, like I struggled, and um, to help them get back on the right track um, in their lives and get sober and be saved. And so I'm using what most people would have thought to be a negative or at some point it was a negative and at some point it became uh, this crazy story about this NBA athlete who was falling from grace to become an alcoholic and broken out of the league. But but God is, used, is using my story to help save lives. And I'm just extremely happy to be a vessel and in some ways, I feel like this has been written already. I, the more I, I stay sober and for eight and a half years now, the more I'm seeing this and now being an assistant coach with the Milwaukee Bucks, the more I'm every day I wake up and I'm like, this was God's crazy way of putting me back where I needed to be. And but I'm excited about it. I'm ecstatic that he chose me um, to be that vessel. I'm happy that he chose me to help other people. I'm even happy that I went through what I went through to be at this point because uh, I, I've said this to multiple people, like the day you wake up and find out what your purpose is, is the day you start living. And uh, since this foundation and since being sober, I found out what my purpose is and, and even more so than playing in the NBA, it's been the best days of my life. 
I noticed that um, a lot of these young people, you know, they feel like they're invulnerable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they feel like that nothing can touch them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some of them have delusion of grandeur that, you know, I'm young enough, I can handle it, you know, you can't tell me anything. But on Saturday, I noticed that there was a lot of young people who probably thought that and went out there and started drinking, drugging, whatever it was. And what I saw was a yard filled with faces of those that were lost to their addiction. Can you attest to that? Yeah, so I, I think the one thing that this platform and having my history of, of playing in the NBA um, and then also having this ep epic fall being documented is that no one's invincible to the disease of alcoholism or mental illness or, you know, just falling. Nobody's invincible and, and everybody, uh, it will happen to someone at some time, it doesn't matter where the fall, how big the fall is, the fall happens. And so I think what's unique about my situation is that um, it was documented. It's well documented. And so when I, I'm in the presence of youth or anyone, people, young people with that feel I can just be a weekend warrior, or I can just <laughs> yes. smoke one so I could just do this one time and for me, it's it started off as as recreation, just like any other college kid. I'm doing well. I'm I'm this big time, you know, college athlete, and I can party with. The, well, it started that way, but um, ultimately, it's not a matter of if it will happen. It's a matter of when it will happen. And I'm not necessarily saying that everybody turns into a drug addict or an alcoholic, but my point is is that the invincibility left like being this amazing athlete who could do so many things on the court to one day like waking up feeling like one of the Space Jam <laughs> characters and all my basketball powers were gone. Absolutely. And so um, that's where I think I can help with so many people understanding that we are not invincible to this disease and we are not invincible, period. And we do need God, not as a co-pilot, we need him as the pilot alone. You know, um, a lot of people are afraid to stand up and say, God is my pilot, because they're afraid of what other people are going to think, how they're going to view them. They're going to think that you're trying to be preachy to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I notice those same people will go to a sporting event or a concert, and they'll yell and scream at the top of their lungs. But as soon as you start to share with them about faith, they sit there and all of a sudden, oh, God, you're preachy, you're preachy, you're mm -hmm. preachy. But... In reality, you're really trying to help them complete their life. Absolutely. And you're trying to give them something that's working, that's mm -hmm. worked for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said before, you fell. Mm -hmm. But like the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Return home. You came back home. Yeah. And I remember you saying that the other day that um, after everything was going on, you came back home and stayed in the house you used to live in before. And what was it like finally coming back home? It, it's it's been great to come back home and, you know, I understood, I thought I knew God's power when I was growing up in the church and being like, I literally grew up in the church. My father's been a preacher since I was four. And so I literally grew up in the church, but not only just growing up in the church, I understood God. I understood his ways. I understood sin. I understood right. I understood wrong. And so, but I also was being blessed by God, like to have this opportunity because I was faithful, I was saved. And so um, once everything went left, I knew what returning home could do for me. Like once I lost everything, mm. I knew that I had somewhere to turn and that was coming back home to God's house. So when I came back broken, I knew I could be fixed. And I wasn't worried about the way the world was talking about being fixed. Like, mm -hmm. so, so losing money, most people think you have to be fixed by getting it back. Or <laughs> yeah. losing certain relationships, you yeah. feel like I got to get that relationship back. And that wasn't the case for me. Like, I had to restore, my faith had to be restored. My relationship with God had to be restored first and foremost. So when I got sober and restored my relationship with Christ... I didn't say, once I get sober, I'm going to coach the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm -hmm. I just said, I need to be sober and healthy. I need to 
God, I have nowhere else to go. Um, I wrote this quote in my book, God and Starbucks, and it was taken from Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life is, you never know that God is all you need until God is all you got. Mm. And that's all I had. Mm -hmm. Like I literally got my prayer, my time with God is all I had. So once I started restoring that relationship with Christ, sober, he started ordering my steps. We had a minister here yesterday talking about, and he read from the scripture, ordered steps. And once I got my relationship back with God, restored, then my steps were ordered. Because there was a time, laugh, I, I was a laughing stock of mm -hmm. wherever. And I couldn't have told you at a point in my life when I was out of the league that I would be an assistant coach on the number one basketball team record wise last year in the NBA. That's only God. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like tell you that story within five for five minutes and not say God. Or you you'd be like, This is man, it makes no sense. Right, right. And so the redemptive power of God, the restoration power of God is real. Um, I'm a part of a miracle and I handle that responsibly because if I just went out and coached the Bucks for the next decade and you know, God willing, won a championship and said, I, I'm hanging around Giannis all the time. That's that's a good story. But where I came from and what I went through, the power comes from now me giving the story back to right. someone and showing them, like, God can restore you no matter where you fall, no matter what addiction you have, no matter what relationship has been broken. God can restore. So... God that's my, with the kink of worm. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And so that that's that's what my entire mission is. I take it serious. I'm adamant about it. I'm competitive about it. Not for me, but to show you what God can do. What you thought God couldn't do, or what you thought um, was something super negative, mm -hmm. God made it positive and so I just had to figure out a way to continue to tell it tell it and he'll figure that out too there was a, um, a friend of mine who um, said they needed a friend mm -hmm. somebody to talk to and I've always redirected them to you know go to the house of God and um, what was powerful is that they wanted to yell and scream mm -hmm. because they were mad at God for what happened in their life mm -hmm. Lost like four, I think it was four people in, in their life within like a month and a half's time. Mm -hmm. Lost four people mm -hmm. that was close to them. And they just told me this this morning um, while I was at the, at the airport. Um, and uh, they said that I went to God's house and I yelled and screamed and God delivered me mm -hmm. from all the hurt and pain that was inside of mm -hmm. me. And what I thought was amazing is that um, a lot of people want to be physically healthy, mm -hmm. which is great, mm -hmm. and um, get themselves in a great place and have a great eating habits and mm -hmm. things like that, which is all great. But you have to have a complete body of work. Absolutely. You got to have balance in your life. Absolutely. Um, what has it done for you to have that balance now in your life? Um, it's been, and that's a that's a great point, Yuri. Is is being physically in shape is awesome. Which I saw you running the other day. Right. <laughs> but spiritually yeah. being in shape is it it it's the foundation for everything. Like it's the foundation for being physically in shape, but it's it's the foundation for having good relationships. It's mm -hmm. the foundation like for having good work relationships. So when I wake up sober for the last eight and a half years and that comes from my spirituality and my relationship, my restoration with God. When I wake up, like, no, and it's not like I don't have bad days or bad events or things that happen mm -hmm. in my life. But at the end of the day, did I think about picking up? Did I think about using? And the answer is for eight and a half years, no. So even though things like everybody, bills, relationships, kids, mm -hmm. I still have a foundation. I'm still in shape that I can push through it. You know from being an athlete as well, like 
when it comes to the fourth quarter or the third quarter, <laughs> yes. that mind starts to play Trick tricks on, on you. Yes. And I can't stay in front of him or he, I can't keep him out of the post. But you know, Yuri, when you're in shape mm-hmm. physically and you've done the work, I, I used to, it's funny, like when I used to play against Alonso Morning, I kid you not, and I told you the story. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I remember that. Zoe used to like, you know, like from a talent standpoint, he was great. And I, we were all on a great level at one point. Right. But Zoe used to always say that nobody could stay with him because nobody was in shape like him. Nobody mm-hmm. worked like him in the way. Right, room. right. And so um, there's something to be said about that, both physically and spiritually. Like, read your Bible. Like, don't go to church. I encourage people not to go to church without having read your Bible because it'd be equivalent to going to church is like going to uh, the gym without reading the Bible, going to the gym and doing like five minutes of cardio and leaving and, and then hoping that will be the trick. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just, just maintaining your um, conditioning, getting your conditioning, fasting, praying, reading the word. Like to me, I tell people the church part is gravy. Like that's, that's just the party. But the real conditioning comes when you take time to read the word and get into scripture and pray. Um, I remember, I remember my, um, my mom had once said to me, and actually as I also heard over the platform before is that, Mm -hmm. um, the easy part is being in this house, Mm -hmm. being in the house of God. Mm -hmm. But what is your life like when you're not in the house anymore? Right. And when you're around a different set of Mm -hmm. friends, do you still stand strong in what you believe mm-hmm. in? Mm-hmm. Um, we're all not perfect. Right. By no means. Right. But I've always found that if you maintain that level of excellence, mm-hmm. regardless if you have those little waves in the mm-hmm. way and you falter here and there, right. as long as you keep going straight down the... Absolutely. That will definitely sustain you in the fourth quarter. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So... Um, just for those that are that don't know, um, how can anybody get a hold of you or RJ mm-hmm. um, about being involved in this foundation? Uh, so visiting uh, my website, uh, benbaker.com, um, we have ways. My email address um, is on there as well as RJ's email address that's on there. So we can use and don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, because I'm in the business of saving lives. And and I think I said this at the event on Saturday, Yuri, one in every three yes. Americans know someone, mm-hmm. if not themselves, know someone that's going through addiction. And yeah. so we have to find, we have to combat that. The numbers are just startling um, to how many people are falling to addiction. So rather than have this mindset of, how fast can we get all the states legalized for marijuana? Let's figure out how we can figure out a way to get the opiate crisis down. Right. And that's, that's, so reach out to me to your point or RJ and the Bouncing Back Foundation and let's try to save lives. One day, I don't care how many we save, let's just start trying to save as many as we can. Somebody, um, a pastor once said that if my only purpose on this earth was to reach the one, mm-hmm then I didn't have a wasted life. That's that right. that God has blessed me to bless someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will sit there and say, well, we're all religious. You guys are talking religious, religious, religious. And one of the things I tell people all the time is that I'm not speaking religiously. I'm speaking in faith. Right. That's I told right. this young kid one day um, at, a, at the league that they had started on Friday. Mm-hmm. And um, I told him the story about you can believe. And I remember they told us this story when I was younger. If there's water right there, mm-hmm. and you guys are thirsty, mm-hmm. and it would quench your thirst and keep you from being dehydrated, mm-hmm. now we both believe in it. Right. But if we don't do nothing about it, right. So Yuri didn't go in and drink the water to make himself right. Right. What Yuri did was sit there as watch. Right. Why well, then said, you know what? I'm about to take this sip. Right. Which means that's faith because faith is an action. Right. So we can all believe mm-hmm. in anything that we want to believe mm-hmm. in. But belief is belief. Mm-hmm. But if you turn it into action, action. Mm-hmm. it becomes faith. That's right. And people see that. That's right. Action speaks louder than words. And right now, 
I heard how you talked in front of four or five hundred people the other day mm -hmm. about your faith mm -hmm. with no regret, with an assurance, mm -hmm. you know, and I had a great time talking to your son that's going to med school. Uh-huh, yeah. So um, I asked him, does he play sports? And he was like, he was like, I'm going to med school. Yeah, yeah. But he's going to a particular school. I'm not going to say anything because, yeah. you know, that's, you know, that's up to you guys yeah. how you put that out there. But mm -hmm. he wants to go to school where he's not only doing meds, mm -hmm. but also learning about being a, a pastor one right. day. Yeah. And he really touched me and we prayed. Mm -hmm. um, your other son is going to a different school. Mm -hmm. All three of us got there and we just prayed. And I said, Lord God, whatever platform they're on, mm -hmm. and let them just be able to minister to those out there and yeah. bring to them things that their people are going to need because people out there really need help. And 100%. I know I do every day. Every day. Every day. I know I need it. Yeah. So I know you're out there listening. So <laughs> this is not condemnation. This is just a shout out to everyone to be mindful. And there's nothing wrong with praying. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. And um, grab a Bible, yeah. read it. Um, what's the harm in trying? Right. If you don't try, it's like someone said, if you don't shoot a shot, you have zero percent. That's right. That's right. That's so right. what's the harm in just opening up and just taking a chance at it and finding out, is this real mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. You don't know until you try. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, when my mom sees this, she is probably right now dancing and screaming. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully that. Hopefully that. Um, hopefully she. Hopefully she'll see this. Um, I don't think she's on our Facebook page for the LLC for Workout Harder, but um, I'm definitely going to make sure that she's linked into it so she can yeah. see it. And I'm telling you, she is going to be going bananas. She's going to be spinning in circles like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I know that next year I want to be involved, sure. and I'm hoping RJ and. Him and I will stay in contact because For there's sure. a bunch of people at my job already had said to me they want to be a part of it next okay. year. Um, one lady who's battled addiction 